Is this a dream? Is this a dream? That's the wrong answer, Doctor. This is most definitely a dream. Now, tell me, do you believe that people can have kinetic powers? And how do we treat people with kinetic powers? Do we encourage them or do we discourage them? Very good, Doctor. That's the right answer. Remember it or there will be consequences. Now, since I'm here, let's have a little bit of fun. Shall we, Doctor? There's someone else in my hour. I brought David back to life. I removed the chains, dressed her. It was Iris. We could try shifting now. Would you like to see David, Doctor? <laughs> Sorry. We both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind, and that broke. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are grateful if you could see your way to declaring me insane, or at least temporarily insane. There was no flame. And then there was. I'll kiss a guy. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. And then he just follows me. Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? Wherever I go. I may just still pull out in front of the driver. Morning, Doctor. You're looking a bit unwell. Are they getting you all wound up? Well, have a look at this. I found it in Dropbox. Apparently, Dr. Decker lent Mariana some money. Sounds dodgy, doesn't it? I also got the toxicology report back from Officer Yates, and shocker, Dr. Decker had... Sorry. You just have to read it. I should have spoiler alert tattooed on my forehead. And... Can we not do the grief counselling thing today? I'm all sorts of behind on work and I'm getting more stressed out watching it all pile up. If you need anything though, I'm here. I feel thirsty, Doctor. And hot. Do you have any water? I've been drinking a lot of water recently. I didn't go to the beach. I didn't go to the sea. I said I would, but I didn't. I've been feeling this way for a while. It's like it's getting worse because I didn't go to the sea. It's like I'm having... I don't feel well. I feel sick most of the time, dizzy, thirsty. I got a head fog like you wouldn't believe. My doctor, Dr. Rose, sent me for blood tests. Dr. Rose thinks maybe I have a vitamin deficiency. I can tell she has no idea. She smiles, but she hasn't got any answers. I think I probably need to go back to the beach. See, doctor, it's calling me. This sounds crazy, but I can hear the sea. It's like an alarm going off in my head. Do you know where the sea is from here? It's over there. Wherever I am, I know exactly where the sea is. It's like a compass. I have this recurring dream. I'm at the beach. I strip, 
and walk into the sea. The sea feels warm and comforting. Not cold and harsh like you'd think. I swim down to the bottom of the ocean. I can breathe freely. I can breathe water. On the ocean floor ahead of me, there is a beautiful creature. A glowing being with wispy limbs. It's so warm. I'm transfixed, but my feet shift, I'm unsteady. Below me the floor is woven in human flesh, dead bodies, but some of them still struggling for life. These are the ones touching me, gripping my feet. I scream. when I wake up. Do you have that dream, Doctor? He lent me some money to start my business. It was a proper agreement. I remember signing things. He thought that a distraction would do me good. I don't think he expected me to trawl the beach for treasure and sell it online. What's Tomazepam? Why are you asking? I don't take sleeping pills. Never have done. When you suffer blackouts already, you don't really get offered anything like that. It's horrific and beautiful at the same time. It's a dream, Doctor. Stranger things happen in dreams. And I don't know what happens to them. I don't always get followed though, so it doesn't explain my blackouts. Dr. Decker thought I had too much time on my hands, so a distraction would do me good. He lent me 15,000, all in all. I hear a sound like singing, calling me. It gets stronger when I face it, when I move towards it. That's how I know where the sea is. But when I don't go to the sea, I feel like the sound gets louder all the time. I'm having trouble sleeping. Perhaps I need sleeping tablets after all. I said I don't know what happens to them. It's not always to the beach. Sometimes they follow me home. My home is in Chantry. You know that. You rang my doorbell last night. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable here, Doctor. I'd like to leave. I've seen Dr. Decker drink, but not that much. Certainly not during our sessions. He had other things on his mind. I'm sure. If you say so, it must have been your twin then. I don't know if I have a twin. Do you have a twin, Doctor? I know you don't. It was definitely you, wearing what you're wearing now. No, 
There's been no dancing. I haven't been feeling that well, Doctor. He's the cute, sad-looking one, isn't he? He asked me out, and I said I'd let him know. Do you think I should go out with him? Doctor, I didn't take you for the jealous type. Are you feeling a bit jealous? Well, maybe you should ask me out properly sometime. Just not today. You said it with such a serious look on your face, I almost believed you. It would be good if you had some kind of superpower that helped me, but I don't think so. It's a referral letter, Doctor. Don't overthink it. A girl can't be too careful with everything that's been going on. I don't want to talk about grief today. I'm getting enough grief from work. I don't know if you know, but Professor Alderby used to be my professor. He teaches history and psychology, amongst other things. I know it's not technically work, but he asked if I would allow him to have the video footage of his sessions with Dr. Decker. Dr. Decker wanted to be removed from all of the videos, so it's jump cut up to jump cut, but I'm sure you've already noticed that. I didn't think you'd mind, since it wasn't your case anyway. Mostly, it's the professor talking about how he viewed reality back then, in so much as he thought it was changeable. There's nothing else to do but watch while things are encoding. Psychokinetics, remember? Cult of the Kinetic Mind? Professor Alderby said it was recommended reading to help psychiatrists in their... Professor Alderby saw the relationship between psychiatrist and patient as a winnable battle. The patient must be cured by removing their psychokinetic ability, if present, either by telling them it doesn't exist or by using another psychokinetic ability to negate it. It's a long time ago, I can't remember all of it. There was a specific example. If someone tells you they can fly, you tell them you control air currents and that from now on they won't be allowed to use them. This would normally stimulate the brain in such a way that the patient stopped thinking they could fly. The main danger as the therapist is believing that you can control air currents. The danger of pretending you have psychokinetic abilities is that you may start believing you have them and then have them. It's the paradox of the cure. Dr. Decker loved paradoxes. His favourite was the grandfather paradox. If you can travel back in time and kill your grandfather, then you cannot be born. But if you cannot be born, then you cannot kill your grandfather. It's a time traveller's chicken and egg, if you will. I don't take sleeping tablets, never have. I'm not allowed to prescribe either. Dr. Deck was woeful. Some people would say Dr. Decker had a bit of a drinking problem. It got worse and then it got better when his confidence turned up. I think it was the stress of dealing with the new patients. I like the odd tipple. I've been known to drink, not as much at the moment, not as much as Dr. Decker did. He kept at least one bottle in his desk drawer at all times. You can't imagine the amount of times I wanted to sneak in and have some. I suppose it's possible that somebody spiked his drink. Most people probably knew he had a bottle in his desk. Wouldn't have been that hard to empty out some capsules into it. Maybe the police should get fingerprints?
I'll go and suggest it. Make sure nobody touches the bottle in the meantime. I have no idea. Maybe he was an undercover secret agent? Maybe he was getting more annoying as time progressed. You're not though, you're lovely. Is this a good time to ask for a raise? Wow, <laughs> I was kidding, but thank you, Doctor. I'll take that as a yes. And don't worry, I'll sort Dr. Decker definitely dabbled in that stuff. I'm not sure to what extent. I like Professor Alderby. He turned me onto that book I've been raving about. The Cult of the Kinetic Mind. I should start selling them myself. Dr. Decker told me he was adopted. His birth mother only turned up five years ago because she wanted money for her experimental cancer treatment. I'm not sure how much it cost or even if he had the money, but he didn't do it and she became one mean mother. There's a lot of stress in here. We're dealing with people's lives. How do you relax, doctor? I love video games. I just wish they'd make ones with stronger female protagonists. Sorry, I'd settle for any female protagonists. I bet you like dance music. I don't know why. Hilda died last night, on her own, heartbroken because she couldn't see her daughter. I feel terrible. I should never have listened to you. In our last session, you said that shifting was wrong, that I shouldn't shift for Hilda, that I should let her die without seeing her daughter. I'm such an idiot. I have this amazing gift and I didn't use it. One of the other nurses found her. She went without anyone even noticing. I wasn't there. I phoned in sick. I knew that if I went into work, I'd want to shift. Most people have taken sleeping pills at some time or another, haven't they? It's probably quite easy to get hold of them. Although, I have to get a doctor to sign a prescription if I need any at work. It's probably the same for Jaya. Dr. Decker drank a bit. I, mean, I didn't say anything about it, but well, it's not, it must be very stressful being a therapist. Do you find it stressful, Doctor? I can tell just by looking at you, this job has really taken its toll on you. Jaya seems really nice. I don't know why she'd want to work in a place like this. I just mean, get all these weird people coming here. I mean, I've met some of them out in the waiting room. I know they're just people, but a couple of them have seriously given me the creeps. She's a slightly older one, isn't she? Always well-dressed? Yes, her. I'm pretty good at picking up on people's energy and hers is cold. Actually, I think I sort of know her. Claire Castleford, isn't it? Apparently, she attacked her husband or something. I think of Dr. Decker every time one of my patients dies. It makes me remember how he didn't care about his mum. He was a good therapist. He was a lousy son. I was angry at Dr. Decker. Hilda's daughter, 
she's in Australia, so fair enough. Maybe she really couldn't get over to see her. But Dr. Decker's mum was dying. But in a way, I wish I hadn't. Because it let Dr. Decker off the hook, you know? I didn't realise how little he cared until I told him the news. You've never seen me angry, have you, Doctor? Don't say things like that when you don't mean them. It causes upset. What's the point of me having this amazing gift if I'm not going to use it? I've helped people with it, I know I have. I don't know why I let you tell me otherwise. At least I still have Amelia. Amelia's Hilda's doll. She used to have about nine or ten of them, all glassy-eyed and creepy looking with frilly dresses and curls. All over her room they were. In the end, we had to get rid of them. They weren't very hygienic. But we let her keep one, and that was Amelia. I'm keeping her safe until I can pass her on to Hilda's daughter. Maybe she'll fly over for the funeral. I don't know. Are you okay, Doctor? You look a bit pale. Yes, I told Dr. Decker. Most other people wouldn't have believed me. But he did more about the shifting than he did about his mum dying. For a moment, I thought he might cry, just for a split second, but he didn't. He just carried on with our session. Oh, I wish I knew what went on there. Jaya probably knows. She spent quite a long time with Sarah when she visited. Yes, once. I wanted to show him what I could do so he could see for himself. I took his hand. I told him to think of a loved one, and then there was nothing. I mean, literally nothing, just an empty void. The only thing I could feel was his hand holding mine. I'm pretty sure without that I'd have... I'm not sure I could have made it back. Terry hasn't been into work for a few days. I hope there's nothing wrong with her. Terry and I are never going to be best friends, but I wouldn't wish her ill. I referred myself because of Dr. Decker's mother. Was I supposed to have a letter? There's no lake house today, sorry. David's not doing very well. He's caused the problem with the girl. I need to do something. The little girl, our neighbour at the lake house, she says David is weird and creepy. Doctor! Oh, sorry, but I found some of the referral letters we were talking about. There is a pattern, but it's not the same for everyone. He said to get them to you ASAP, so here you go. David has been hunting and skinning again, but from the look of the torso, he caught a domestic cat. I'm being generous. It was definitely a cat. I spoke to David about it, but I have no idea if he can comprehend me or not. He just grunts at me. He doesn't even smile anymore. Not at all. Ah, yes, sorry. Uh, I left out an important detail. The girl, Anushka, she was crying because her cat had gone missing and she thinks that David killed it. Doctor, I'm worried. I'm worried that David's not going to stop at cats. He's killed wild birds and now cats. I'm worried he might add little girls to his list. 
I can't stop him. I can't stop him. I can't control him in any way at all. Ever since I brought him back from the dead, he has done nothing but ignore me. I'm starting to think that... that I need to put David out of his misery. That I need to end his suffering. That I need to kill him again. What shall I do, Doctor? Should I kill David? <sighs> Very well. I will do as you say. I suppose I can let this go on, now that someone else knows about it. The responsibility of having David is too much for me on my own. Thank you, Doctor. I've never used sleeping pills. I'm too afraid of what would happen to me in my sleep. If Dr. Decker was an alcoholic, he hid it well. I never saw him drink. He certainly never offered me a drink. David hasn't been well, otherwise I've taken you. Shall I bring him to you next time? Next time then. Although it will have to be just you here, and late at night. I can't have anyone else see him. I never talked to Bryce, but I did talk to Iris. She didn't want to at first. She blames me for David's death, but as we both know, that's not a thing. Anyway, she said she was never locked up in any basement and had never heard of any Dr. Decker. So it's, as I first suspected, a lie. You didn't make all of that up so I talked to Iris again, did you? Then Mr. Bryce seems to have a few more issues than me. Perhaps you should ask him about that. Oh yes, here. From a few weeks ago, as you can see, Doctor, he looks perfectly normal. Decker was very quiet in our sessions after seeing David. After a while he started talking about David like he was a pet, asking me what I fed him, what he'd do in certain conditions. I think he was fascinated with it all and David and I had become new test subjects for him. When I said David never listens to me, he urged me to start giving David treats for pleasing me. Not in that way, but showing him how to close a door, for example. If he did it, give him a treat. It did actually work, but I had to stop myself. I felt like I was training a monkey. It just wasn't right. Dr. Decker asked me if I'd ever accidentally locked David in, which I hadn't, but curiosity got the best. He didn't have the wherewithal to operate the lock. That's an interesting idea, Doctor. There's not really something that needs to be done, though. I have no intention of reanimating anybody anymore. It hasn't gone very well in the past. My solicitors did refer me, but I ended up going privately as it was cheaper. I'm paying them enough already without them getting a percentage of my therapy bill. I'm fine. I'm worried. My pursuer in the hour, he's definitely military. I've developed a new skill to deal with him. Last night, I saw him draw something from his jacket. He was approaching me, grinning. I had nowhere to go. So I closed my eyes and imagined, well, I imagined being back home 
And when I opened them again, I was. I'd teleported. My other doctor had prescribed me sleeping pills before I came to see Dr. Decker. I think they were called Tamazepam. I never took them. I saw Jessica across the street this time being able to face her. Do you think I should tell her about the photos, Doctor? Yes, yes, you're right. I should tell her what I've done. Or at least let her have the photos. I don't think she's going to be very pleased. But I should be honest. Work is fine. If anything, I've been falling behind again. I think it's the stress of not being alone in the midnight hour anymore. I stole a painting. There, I've said it. It was from the local gallery, Providence. I really like it, but I can't afford it. So I took it. It's just that one thing, just the painting I've stolen recently. I think my new pursuer is unravelling me. Is it okay to steal things, Doctor, if I really like them? I thought you'd say that. I will do my best to refrain from it, but I can't promise anything. I never saw Dr. Decker touch a drop. Doesn't mean it wasn't going on behind closed doors, though, does it? My pursuer. He's measured in his approach, watching, testing. When he finally came for me, I wasn't ready. Just leave. Why do you think he's coming after me, Doctor? Oh, I think I might know. I think he's death, Doctor. I think I saved that old woman from burning to death in bed, and now he's coming after me, to even the score. Do you think it could be death? It's just me. I'm going crazy. I'm so strange. Everything about me is strange already, but to have another presence in my hour, it's unhinged me. I was as surprised as you are. I just imagined I was somewhere else, and there I was. Perhaps Dr. Decker was right. Think of something, and it becomes real, if you believe in it. But I'll only do it wisely. Imagine the mistakes you might make. Don't want to become one with the igneous layer too soon. These sessions cost a lot of money, Doctor. I'm not just going to leave in the middle of one. But I can see you don't believe me. Do you really want me to teleport, Doctor? Good. I was starting to think you didn't care about me one way or the other. Yes, that's David Castleford. I have no idea when it was taken. Shocking composition. No, Doctor. No, you can't. I've seen what you can do. You can listen and ask, but you don't have any real power. I was one of Dr. Decker's first patients. I wasn't referred by anyone. My GP recommended I saw someone privately. I think he was just sick of listening to me complain about how little time I had during our ten-minute slot. Scarlet. I haven't been in since he died. Since Dr. Decker died. Valentine's Day was awful. I had a bit of an accident with a creme brulee torch and had to spend the night waiting in A&E. 
I melted a nail to my finger. It hurt a lot and needed stitches. It's all fine now, though. He was a complicated man, as I suppose most people are. His external persona didn't match what he dreamed about. His dreams were amazing, filled with a spectrum of colours and creatures. It was like Narnia for grown-ups. That was in the beginning. I'm a dreamwalker. I can visit people and help them in their dreams. You've not quit. Soft intricate things. I couldn't draw a picture if you asked, but they drew you to them. They looked a little strange, but you felt compelled to watch them. Chaotic, dark. Like an earthquake, everything you stood on shifted into something else. I think he was fighting with something internally, and it was winning. I don't know. It's a turn of phrase. Inner demons? Insanity? I don't know. I can visit dreams, but I can't force the dreamer to interact with me been able to do since I was little. I was born an identical twin, and my sister and I shared dreams. We just thought it was normal. When our younger brother started having night terrors, we helped him. I just need to know the person, a little, and know they're dreaming. Then I can sort of jump into them. It's Something, I think, in my mind. Firstly, I need to sleep myself. I'm constantly tired, so I can pretty much sleep on demand. Before I go, I think of jumping into that person. That's how it works for me. I've tried teaching others, but I don't know if anyone else can do it. I don't know. Lots of people. Whenever I get close enough to tell somebody about it, the first thing they want to do is try it out or have me visit their dreams. That's kind of why I'm here. Relationships. It's difficult to sustain them. I'm not just talking about romantic entanglements. It's hard keeping friends, too. Like I said before, I miss. I don't normally like what I see. I think people try to show off. Firstly, they're a bit shocked if I turn up in their dream. But when they're comfortable with that, they start to put on a show. But most people can't control their dreams, so they tend to turn into nightmares pretty quickly. Oh look, <laughs> I'm dreaming of a giant Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh, why is it destroying New York? When you've experienced someone's dream, if they've been a bit creepy in it or terrified me, it's hard to look someone in the eyes after that. It's embarrassing. What should I do, Doctor? Should I not tell people about my ability? Keep it a secret, bottle it up.
I know, right? So if I tell them, what can I do to stop pushing people away? It's difficult to do when you experience them like I do. But I know what you're saying is right. A lot of the time I assume people are controlling their dreams like I can. But they're probably directed by their subconscious and who controls that? He's dead now, so I suppose it won't affect him if I admit that. So yes, I was. Not near the end though, not when his dreams started changing. Like I said, my ability ruins relationships. Who told you? Jaya? Just thought she'd know. Thought she'd know everything about her precious Dr. Decker. Sorry, we didn't speak that much. But she was a lot like the other woman. So much control over someone who was supposed to be her superior. Sorry, uh, I'm Glenn. Uh, I didn't expect to be here. I was looking for the men's room. Like I said, I was in the green room. You know that new restaurant in town. Uh, I actually need to do something. Uh, done, sorry. Um, I was in the middle of a date and needed the restroom, and here I am. Sorry, sorry, you're not familiar with my case. I stepped through the restroom door into your office. Sometimes when I go through a door, it opens to another place. No, I shouldn't imagine she did that. I didn't even pass through the waiting room. Besides, it's lunchtime, she won't be there. No, not really. But it's lunchtime, and you don't normally see patients now. Well, Dr. Decker didn't normally see patients now. I arrived late to the party. Apparently, he was a fine, upstanding citizen before. I don't know what changed him. Of the few sessions I had with him, he'd observed me walking through doors. But I'd walk through a door and I'd disappear. And then I couldn't get back. The session was £150 either way. So I paid that for a couple of times and then decided it was a bad idea. As you can see, it's still happening. The doors. I'm still vanishing from one place to another. My dad died. He was on his deathbed and I was complaining about work, women or whatever. It was Nidium. He said, when one door closes, another opens. Then he died. I needed those words to be important. So here I am. He was stoic. He had tuberculosis in his lungs. That's what killed him. Nobody knew until the end. I never got to say I loved him. Yeah, maybe. 
He'd split with my mum three years earlier. It was messy. It was bad. I didn't talk to him really at all. They called me as next of kin, said I should come in if I wanted to say goodbye. I did love it. He just broke everything. No. I hadn't seen him for so long. I just let it all out. I, I screamed, I shouted, I punched the walls. Do you know what he said? Sorry. Over and over again. Like he really meant it. He did. He really meant it. And when I stopped, when I was exhausted, he smiled at me. Like, like he cherished me. Like he'd been waiting to say sorry. Waiting for forgiveness. I didn't get to say I loved him. I didn't get to forgive him. He just said when one door closes, another opens. And then he died. What does he think of me? All those years, thinking I was the bigger man, it turns out he was. There's no going back, is there, Doctor? When one door closes, it's shut forever. How? How do I go back? I think you're quite right. I've been trying to address the symptoms and not the root of the problem. <sighs> you might be the best replacement doctor this place has seen. I'll book a real appointment next time and you can help me with this. <sighs> Thanks, doctor. I'm feeling good. I ran into one of your other patients. Mariana. She's beautiful. I think we might go on a date. If you get the combination of alcohol and sleeping tablets just right, you can knock out an elephant. I've no idea what kind of animal Dr. Decker was. Which reminds me, that truck driver died. It's funny how when somebody dies, all their bad traits come out. Yes, Dr. Decker was a heavy drinker. He would often pour himself a glass during one of our sessions. Pretty rude. The truck driver that ran into Hannah. He was divorced, apparently. He killed himself. He mixed sleeping pills with alcohol, too. But he died in his garage. I read it in the paper. He'd been drinking. Then he took the sleeping pills. Then he went into his garage and put the hose pipe through his window. Not until he put his daughter in the seat first. It's one of those newspaper stories you read and you hope it says he leaves behind his wife and seven-year-old daughter. But his daughter was in the car in a letter. Dr. Decker told me one of the ways to get through my grief would be to write a letter to the truck driver. I tried to forgive him. I know it was my fault, but the thing that made me feel best was blaming him. I think maybe he killed himself because of me. Do you think I'm to blame, Doctor? Maybe. Who knows what he was doing when he ran into Hannah? His daughter's picture was in the paper. Molly. 
Ever since I saw a picture in the paper, I have started thinking I could see her. Out of the corner of my eye. Like she's watching me. Crazy, right? What are you trying to do most? Cure his patients or find out who killed him? It's been nice chatting with you, don't get me wrong, but I can't help but feel you're mainly interested in finding out about the old doctor. I suppose you already know Dr. Decker thought one of his patients was trying to kill him. He told me in one of our sessions, which was later rewound, that someone had been leaving him messages on his prescription pad. Not good messages. He didn't tell me anything specifically. Just death threats. It was one of his... I just sat there quietly, hoping he wasn't going to try and hypnotise me again. I asked him if it was a boy or a girl's handwriting. He said he knew who it was, and that they'd be in trouble. I think he was bluffing. I can't really explain it, but she seems like such a friendly person. I think the police are barking up the wrong tree. I think I've probably said too much. It's probably not the same girl anyway. Please do. I wish I could believe you. My solicitors assured me that I wouldn't have to discuss anything about my trial with you. So I'm not going to. Concentrate on my state of mind and let me worry about other things. You said you'd help me with my problem, but he's still here. Dr. Decker. He wants me to kill people. He wants them to follow me to the sea, to the creature. It eats them. It's getting stronger. Dr. Decker says when it's strong enough, it's going to walk again. That's why I black out. He doesn't want me to know. He doesn't want me to remember. I'm feeding a beast that wants to eat us all. You've got to tell me, Doctor. You have got to tell me the truth. You're dreaming, but your dreams are the truth. Don't forget me when you wake. I don't know how I'm in your dream, but Let's play a game. I say a word, you say a word. Ready? Guilty. Murderer. That's a good doctor. Now, just give me those three little words and I'll let you go. Yes, yes you do.